that student who asked, I can never remember the kanji outside of kanji studies. And they were basically just feeling concerned that they keep forgetting things. Things aren't sticking. Hmm. How do I make stuff stick in my brain? Am I doing this correctly? I feel like I, they were saying, I feel like I should maybe use a worksheet or write things down. Um, what's the best approach here? What are your, your recommendations for someone who feels like they're forgetting um, kanji, for example, outside of like a, a lesson? What is the, what's the response there? Em embrace that feeling yeah um 100 there's nothing wrong with feeling like you don't you didn't remember it you don't get it you're supposed to feel like that and once you've learned enough things you start to have a different relationship with that feeling hmm. for example i'm i'm trying to get back into my korean studies because that's a great thing to do when you've just had a baby and you're busy with work. <laughs> uh, and all the Korean words sound the same to me. It sounds like every single word has a J in it and this very similar sounding vowel. And I'm reminded of how I felt like all the words sound the same in Japanese when I first started mm, learning it. Yeah. Because there's so few sounds in the language compared to English. Right. With a few phonemes. And so I thought it's impossible to learn a whole language when there's so few sounds, all the words sound the same. And there's a bunch of words that are the same. Mm. Um, homophones, I mean, homonyms, some like right. things like that. And I was super stressed about it. But it just, if you just keep engaging with the learning material, you just, it starts to click eventually. Right. So right now, yeah, Korean words pretty much all sound the same to me. I can't rem remember like anything that I study. But because my relationship with that feeling has changed, I'm not that worried about it. It's just like, yes. oh, that's wild that someday. This will make sense. This is not all going to sound the same to me. And yes. they're going to be completely distinct. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think this feeling is very common, regardless of your circumstance. And it's perfectly okay. And it is actually in many ways, a good part of the learning process. When you are questioning yourself whether or not you know this thing outside of the context of the place you initially learned it, you're not sure if you're remembering the kanji, for example, I would like to say that that means that you're learning because, because if you knew it already, you wouldn't have the question. And if you didn't have that question because you weren't learning it, then you wouldn't be learning it. So you, so you wouldn't have the question because you're not actually doing it. So the fact that you have the question is part of the process, right? You're wondering, wait, I feel like this isn't sticking in my mind. Is it actually sticking or not? So you have that yeah. question, um, which is a good place to be because it means you, you're, you're, you're active, you're engaged with your learning, you're concerned. And so instead of taking that concern and then being anxious with that concern, we can take that concern and use it as um, motivation to continue what we're doing, right? We can say, oh, I have this fin, therefore I must be on a path towards learning and I can't say that native shark is perfect for all people because I'm sure that it is not. There are going to be people out there who cannot learn effectively with native shark. That's just, that's facts. I am trying to build, or we are trying to build the best system that we can to work for the most amount of people that it can, but it won't work for everyone. That's okay. Um, however, when you're trying to decide is native shark working for you or not, the, the, the thing that I could say is be consistent and stay with it. Um, and engage with these questions, like ask us, ask the community. Um, and I'm, I feel confident giving that answer because there are a lot of people at this point that have had success um, once they've worked through some of these um, these feelings and these mental loops of, of engaging with their studies and staying consistent and finding ways to calm their mind. And six months time, seven months time, it's like they look back and like, wow. I actually learned so much that I didn't, I didn't notice it even hardly because I, I had the feeling of I'm not remembering it. And then I just, just stuck with it, you know, daily, weekly that built upon itself. And that feeling kind of just vanished or it, it, it changed. So the feeling still exists, but now you're using it 
as fuel to continue your discovery because you look back. So, so what I would say is like, if there is one kanji that you can remember outside of the context of the thing that you learned it in, you're good. If it happened yeah. with one kanji, it will happen with another and another and another and another. Add it. Yeah, Add it just, <laughs> I mentioned earlier that, you know, we've all been sort of conditioned to think that learning happens the way it happens in school, mm. which means that you test on it, which means that knowing or not knowing a kanji is getting something correct or incorrect on a test. It's like a checkbox. Yes, yeah. I know it. No, I don't know it. But it's not actually like, that's not how you know or don't know a thing. Mm-hmm. Instead, if you think that, you know, say you are starting to learn a kanji and it starts at the tip of your finger and then knowing it, like really knowing it as well as the most educated native speaker would mean the kanji had moved all the way up your arm and into your brain, right? <laughs> yeah. So maybe right now that kanji has made it like to the middle of the palm of your hand. Maybe it's made it up to your wrist. Maybe it's made it up to your bicep. But it's not going... It's not at some check bar, check marks, check marks, check marks <laughs> that you just yes. mark and then you know it or don't yeah. know it. Yeah. It's something that you know more and more over time. Yeah. Uh, the thing with, and sorry, go ahead. Some things are going to shoot straight up to your brain from the tip of your finger just mm. because you have a nice foundation of other things. Like for me right now, it's not very hard to learn a new Japanese word because I know so many other words. Yeah. So yeah, something could move quickly up to my brain. But when I just started, it was like, it took a long time for things to make it all the way up there. Hmm. And interestingly enough, there are many places along that path which you would pass or not pass a test on that thing. Yes. Um, and one of the challenging things about learning as well, and specifically this kind of information, like a language, is that whether or not you remember something on a given day can <laughs> depend on what you ate for breakfast or not. Like you might remember it tomorrow, but not today, or you might remember it in five hours, but not right now. Does that mean you don't know it? Not, not really. Actually, if you've been exposed to it and you stay consistent, um, it's, it's a thing that like goes in, in, in waves, right? Like fluctuates. And eventually like Nico was just saying, it does make it up to your, to your brain. And at that point, once, the vast varied in inputs have um, gone into your brain. You now have like a network and a web of understanding inside your mind that you can now relate one concept to another concept and it becomes easier to learn new concepts so that that feeling e diminishes even further. Um, but it's, it's a lot of that initial uptake that can feel um, often demotivating or uh, worrisome, but you yeah. know, I'll get there. And then specifically about kanji, since the student asked about kanji, um, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't consider kanji a very good example of any of this because it's pretty hard to say whether you know or don't know a kanji mm. because a lot of them, yeah, you might know it in these types of words where it has this type of meaning, and then suddenly you're going to get hit with a different word where it appears to have no meaning at all or a different meaning, yeah, or a different reading. And that's fine. Like you, you just learn those words as you encounter them. Mm. Um, so if you've just seen a kanji a few units back and now it's in a word and you forgot what it meant, who cares? Just learn yeah. the word and you'll be keep all right. moving forward. And eventually you're probably going to see that kanji in a different word and think, well, I didn't expect that kanji to be in this word. That's weird. And then after a while, it just doesn't even feel weird. It just feels like, oh yeah, that word has that kanji in it. And I forgot what that kanji meant, but I remember what the word is and I can read it. Right. Yep. This, this, where I'm at in my studies, this happens to me most of the time because I don't actively study at the moment. So I can read words. I can read well and speak decently well, but I'll see words and I'll be like, I can read this word and I know what this word means. I have no idea what this individual kanji means anymore. I completely forgot. Uh, oops. But like the context of the word and the sentence, uh, it's all good. Um, so you don't, this idea of needing to know what every single kanji, what every single kanji's um, individual out of context by itself, English representation is, is ultimately unproductive. Like you can use that as a tool. That's why it's in native shark, but it is not the metric of whether or not you know, or don't know a kanji. Um, like again, even, even people born in the, in, in Japan and speak Japanese their entire life 
will see a kanji out of context and be like, I don't know how to say that or what that means. It happens to yeah, anybody. I forgot, I've forgotten what they know, what they mean, you know, independently for like hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. Because you just don't need to know it after a while if you just know the words they mm -hmm. appear in. But some you do. You, like, you'll forever know what it means by itself. Like you see Mizu and it's like, ah, boy, the fruit means water. Like you're not, yeah. not going to forget that. You're not going to, but that's, that's fine. That's how that word functions in your mind. Like different words function differently. It doesn't matter what language it is. This is just the way that it is for for language and words in your in your brain yep so you're on the right path stick with it that's that's my ultimate recommendation recommendation um stay consistent give it give it some time um and uh try to reorient that anxiety energy from fear of forgetting towards motivation to continue learning yeah well forgetting something once and then having to find out again what it meant is learning yeah for sure